Well, good morning, City Church Rockford. And greetings to all of you online. So good to be able to come and partner again with Pastor Doug. You need to know at the end of the message today, uh, Pastor Doug's going to come up and give an invitation to you to invite Christ in many different ways to a place and a space in your life where you might need him this morning, even more than you don't know right now. And as we go through this message, I would just ask you to open your heart to what the Lord would say. I woke up early this morning and I went straight to just a listening time with the Lord. And again, as I've been saying to you the last few times I've been here, I just sense the Lord saying to me very clearly, say my name clear today. Let people hear my name and hear the hope that's in my name. I was looking around. I saw, I don't know exactly how old you are, but 13, 14, 15 year olds as I looked around. And man, I just, I'm so thrilled that you're here to hear the name of Christ. You're not getting it much in society. You're not getting it on TikTok. Um, You know, when I was your age, it was TikTok, TikTok toe was what it was. Now it's TikTok, and in 50 years, it'll be Tock Rock or whatever it'll be. All that changes. But the only thing that stays steady is the everlasting teaching that comes from this book. This morning, I want all you to know, I'm not going to tell you my opinion. I'm going to tell you his opinion. Because this one lasts. And this morning, it is a delight, literally a delight, to get to preach from God's Word. And I pray that you will open your heart up. I'm going to talk from 2 Timothy chapter 2. The last time I was here, I talked a little bit about Paul, 60-year-old, teaching Timothy, a 30-year-old. I'm going to continue that conversation with you as we go into 2 Timothy chapter 2. And here's what we're going to talk about. Paul was helping Timothy because Timothy, he dealt with some anxiety. He he dealt with some, some struggles. He had issues in his life. And he was a young man, and he was fighting through those. And you may be older and you may be younger, but you're here today. You've been through some struggles. You've been through some issues. Maybe even today you're going, I got something right now in my life I don't know how to cope with. Well, Paul's guidance to a man named Timothy who was dealing with that. You say, well, what caused his issues and anxiety? Uh, He was pastoring a church. Believe it or not, it's challenging. Sometimes I meet people. They'll see me at Meyer or whatever, and they'll, they'll say something to me, and they'll say, man, I, I just wish I worked in a church. I always say to them, be very careful. <laughs> because when you work at a church, you get to see the ins and outs, the ups and the downs. It's not perfect. I lead a nonprofit, went in a home. We have issues. So wherever you are today, I want you to say, Lord, in my place that I am today, Wherever you're dealing with, I look for you to give me guidance into that issue or that struggle. Those 13 and 15-year-olds I mentioned at the beginning, you got something. There's something that sometimes keeps you up at night. You 60-year-olds, you got something. There's something that sometimes keeps you up at night. We're talking about that today. Because Paul gave very specific instructions to Timothy. I love the very first sentence that he said to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2. He said, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Again, even Timothy needed to hear the name of Christ clearly. And then he said this to Timothy. And nobody here today is going to jump in on this. As soon as I say it, you're going to say, really? Preacher, you're going to say that? Paul said it to Timothy, so I'm just going to quote Paul. Paul said to Timothy, Timothy, join me in suffering. Nobody here gets excited about that. If I said the title of my message is The Joy of Suffering, you're going to be like, I'm going somewhere else today. (laughs) Suffering is not something that we embrace. Suffering is something we work our tails off to get away from. Think of the last thing you bought on Amazon. I bet it was something to make your life more comfortable. I was walking through a store a couple days ago, and I I don't have one of these, but I saw this. It was a comfy blanket or something. You put it all the way around you. Your legs go in it. Your arms go in it. Your head go in it. Called a comfy blanket. Why? It gives me peace. You know, I can look at that thing and look at all y'all and say, see ya, and go down into my little (laughs) turtle blanket. Because we all like comfort. Then Paul says to Timothy, join me in suffering. What the world? 
What could that mean? Why would that be beneficial to us? Why would what you're going through today that's very challenging in your life be good for you? After first service, I had a young man come up to me and say, Hey, Dan, I found out I have cancer this week. That message spoke right to my spirit and to my heart. I'm going to join the Lord in whatever plan he has for me in this situation. It's so good. And why, why sometimes do we go through this thing called suffering? I, I, I want to throw out, I wrote down just a few things that I think suffering does for us. First of all, I think it brings opportunity to know Christ deeper. When you're doing well, last time, remember, I preached the message of just having it all and living on easy street. And I thought, when you get there, it's easy to get comfortable. And sometimes when we face trials, we run to the Lord. Suffering will put you in a place where you call out to the Lord God Almighty even more than you have before. If you recall, recently there was a shooting at Michigan State University, and, and sadly, uh, some people lost their lives, some students lost their lives, and, and we were hearing that on the news, and it seems to be growing around us, these sort of things happening. And I have permission to share with you that one of the students who was there that day has been talking to a friend of mine, and this particular student was there, heard the guns going off, saw people falling. I mean, literally was in the space where all this was happening. And that particular student dove underneath the table. And the student came to my friend and was telling my friend, I'm an atheist. Like, I don't even believe God exists. That's what the student said. I don't believe God even exists. But I found myself... Underneath that table, and I was praying. The student said, why, what, what inside, why did I do that? was asking my why did I do that? And my friend was able to say, because when God made you, he stamped his image on you. Whether you want to believe in him or not, he created you for his glory. The best way I can relate to that is when my daughter was wayward and not doing well. She didn't want me to be her dad. She's like, I don't want you. I don't want you to be my father. But it didn't mean I wasn't her father. I was her father. She was rejecting me, but I'm still her father. She's back now. We have a wonderful, loving relationship. Some of you might be in that space or that place with God where you go, I don't even know if I believe in what this pastor is talking about. Well, the God that you would say that to, he believes in you. He chose you. And I want you to hear that. And I want you to know that. And sometimes when we go through suffering, we need to be reminded, God picked me. He picked me before I picked him. He is for me. He wants me to be and be able to call on his name no matter what I face. So suffering sometimes calls us closer to the Lord. Secondly, I wrote down, suffering teaches us that our security and peace is not found in anything in this world. <laughs> we, we are good at building insulation around ourselves, you know, an, an insulation of stuff, an insulation of money, an insulation of friendship. And we get that thing really thick and we go, oh, I'm, I'm good now. And then something starts cracking through. And all of a sudden, our security's gone. Because people... And stuff and finances can all go away. Something can shatter through that wall. And Paul was saying to Timothy, son, son, don't put your value there. Don't put your trust in that. Put it in Christ Jesus. N listen, if your value and your connection of who you are is found in your identity in the Lord, nothing in this world can separate that. Student in here today, find your value in the Lord God Almighty, not in somebody's opinion that they're telling you to follow. Amen. Find it in the Lord. The third thing I think that, that suffering does is it reminds me of my frailty and God's power. You're, I just, just want to go ahead and tell all of you, I just got a piece of information for you today. You're going to die. You're frail. Sorry, it's just true. Nobody in here is just going to outlive death. It's, it's part of the deal. I'm frail. I'm fallen. I'm just a little human being. 
at the end of first service. He may do it again today, but Doug was talking about this God who created all things. I've been reading in Psalm 24, the earth is the Lord and everything in it and all of us who dwell in it. And God looks down and we're just little dust of the earth. We're so, we're, we're insignificant and yet significant to him. It's such a balance of understanding that. But today you need to know if you bought into, the, well, I'm, I'm, I'm large and in charge. There, there are some hard days coming for you. You know, I, I would consider myself a killer dad. I mean, I, was at, I didn't miss any of my kids' events. I would even sometimes, I was pastoring at the time, I would miss a church event to be at my kids' events. I would drive. I would do whatever I had to do to be there. I was there. I was a killer good dad. I would have said I nailed it. And a few weeks ago, my son and I, my oldest son and I, were riding to Chicago to an event in Chicago. And on the way, probably about an hour in, he just said, Dad, can I talk to you about some stuff that you did as a father that really has been really hard on me? I'm like, what, me? I'm a great dad. I'm not frail. I don't have failures and falls. And for about uh, 30, 35 minutes, he just began to tell me all the things that, that I did that's really been hard on him. And I mean, the whole time I'm wanting to defend myself and go, but I was a better father than my father. And I'm good. I, and I just listened and I thought, wow. He's reminded me I'm frail, I'm broken. He got done, and my words to him were, son, I'm, I'm so glad you shared that with me. I'm, I'm sorry, because I can see how the things I did. I used to be a dad that reacted a lot. I'd get really angry. Those days, thank God, are behind me, but I didn't do all that right. I don't get a chance to do it over. And I need to look at my son and say, dude, you're right. I didn't nail it as good as I thought. I'm frail. Son, do me a favor. Make sure you don't ever find whatever you find in this life. Don't find identity in me. Find it in God the Father. He will never fail you. Dad will fail you. Others will fail you. Somebody in here today, your dad let you down. Yeah, he's frail. Your mom, coming up on Mother's Day. I don't even want to see my mother. She really, she really screwed me over. Yeah, mom's fail. And it's why Timothy was saying to, I mean, Paul was saying to Timothy, Jesus. It's why I've come this morning to say the name of Christ very clearly to you. And until you find your full value in that name, you're going to really struggle. Because people let you down. And then Paul, writing this letter to Timothy... Let's put the context of it, okay? Timothy's pastoring a church. Church has got issues. It's bringing stress on his life. Paul writes him a letter. He couldn't just call him or text him like we can do. Paul writes him a letter. Hearing about it goes, Timothy, here's a few things you need to know. Join me in suffering. Then he says the next few things, and they're for you today. I'm going to be in just a moment showing three pictures on the screen. I'm praying that the Lord will take one of these pics and later on today you're somewhere chilling, tonight when you lay your head on the pillow, maybe tomorrow when you're heading to work, one of these pics will come back to your mind because this pic is for you. I want you to know that Paul, even in writing this to Timothy, he finishes this little part I'm about to show you with this phrase. He says, Timothy... Reflect on what I'm saying. The Lord will give you insight into what it means. So today, I'm just going to present factual truth from God's Word. Not my opinion, not my thought, not my idea. Paul wrote it for us in 2023. And I'm going to show you what he said to Timothy, and then I'm going to ask you to go, hmm. Later on, hmm. I think that was for me. I think that's something I need to apply to my life. The way that happens is to sit and reflect on it. Take time to ponder it. Here's what it is. Paul tells a story to Timothy about a soldier. He tells a story to Timothy about a runner. And he tells a story to Timothy about a farmer. Three different groups of individual that does life. 
And I'm going to show you what Paul said about each of these individuals. And you get to seek the Lord on how he needs to apply it to your life. Because as many people in here and online and first service and online, the Lord has lots of practical applications for your life. And I say the same thing that Paul said, think on it. So with the soldier, Paul wrote to Timothy and he said about this soldier... Here's the sentence. No one serving as a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs, but rather tries to please his commanding officer. Let me tell you what he's saying to us in that sentence. Be careful in this world. Those of you who are seeking God and following after God, be really careful because life can distract you. Life can throw something at you that gets your mind off the fact that you're on this earth to please the commanding officer. In relation to Timothy, Paul was saying to him as a pastor of that church, Timothy, remember you're there to preach the gospel and to call people to Christ. Lots of other stuff within that church is going to come up. Some that will even make some people leave. Timothy, be careful. Don't get entangled in that stuff. In your life today, what's the thing that entangles you, that keeps you from following your commanding officer? Let me explain that. That's God Almighty. Ultimately, at the end of your life, you will stand accountable, not to your mama, not to your daddy, not to your pastor, not to me, not to your girlfriend, not to your boyfriend, husband, wife. You will stand and give account for your life to your commanding officer, God Almighty. We spend a lot of time in this world trying to please people, trying to get their accolades, trying to get their at a boy and at a girl, trying to get their praise, trying to get their trophies. And Paul's saying to Timothy, a good soldier has one goal, to please their commanding officer. When you get recruited or you join the military, Let me tell you what does not happen. You don't walk into boot camp on the first day and say, let me tell y'all what I'm going to be doing while I'm here. No. You walk in and your commanding officer says, this is the way you'll stand, and you stand that way. This is the way you'll salute. No, you'll do it. Y'all remember Gomer Powell. I watched the show, I'm dating myself, but Gomer Powell, yes, sir, whatever you say, sir. It was just, you know, country boy. And all he needed to do was obey his commanding officer. But see, I want to say something to students for sure right now for a moment. It applies to all of us, but students right now you're being told, just do, do, follow whoever you want to follow. You be you. You're your own commanding officer. You decide what's right and wrong. Go ahead. And let me tell you, students who are here, I know what's happening inside your heart. You feel chaotic because you don't have a solid foundation, a solid line. The world is telling you, no, no, you're your own officer. No, you're not. No, you're not. You belong to God Almighty, and you're accountable ultimately to Him. And I want to tell you that in a world that's getting further and further away from that thinking, I'm going to get more and more solid in preaching this because students in here, you need to know there is a right and there is a wrong. And God set it all up from the beginning. He put it in his word. It's not my opinion. I'm not just saying it to go, well, that's what I think. No, that's what the word thinks. And the word, according to God, is everlasting. It will outlive TikTok. It will outlive your thinking. So put your foundation in that. and you. But it's not real popular. Correct. Jesus said they will hate you because of me. Not looking to be popular. Paul was saying to Timothy, Timothy, popularity is not what we're after here. We're after serving the Lord God Almighty who is our ultimate commanding officer. And I'll tell you what happens in your life. It sounds crazy. But if you figure this out, you start to have peace in yourself. Start to have peace. Even in a world that's chaotic, you can go, I'm pretty peaceful. I'm not struggling with all these things. Why? Because you found a solid rock. And then Paul says to Timothy, he says, now, Timothy, I want to tell you about the runner. He said, the runner 
Anyone who competes as an athlete does not receive the victor's crown except by competing, look, here it is again, according to the rules. Now, let me set this up for you a little bit. Leave that up there for just a second if you don't mind. Paul wrote this probably, Josephus says that Paul was probably sitting in Corinth in the stadium watching runners try out to make it into the Olympics. The Olympics started in 776 B.C., so way before Paul was even around. Olympics started in Greece. It was a tribute to the god Zeus. And even up in Paul's day, the people from Corinth would try out, kind of have what we call time trials, where you go and try to make the Olympics. They would have been doing that there in Corinth. And Paul sat in the stands and watched these runners run. That's why I think Paul so often wrote about running the race. He must have really enjoyed sports. So Paul says to Timothy, listen to me, Timothy. You're running for the victor's crown. Notice it doesn't say for an earthly crown to get those accolades we talked about earlier. Paul said, no, Timothy, you're running this race for the victor's crown, and there is rules and guidelines set up for it. In that race we're looking at right there on the screen, you see the runner in the yellow leading the race. Notice he's in his lane. He, if that runner who was in that lane said, you know what, I'm going to jump over in this other lane, the one that the guy with the red's on, that lane looks nicer to me, and it's not fair I have to run in this other lane. If he jumps in that other lane, guess what happens? DQ, disqualified. There's rules. We live in a world right now that says, there's no rules. Man, you do whatever you want. But you have, no, you, you, mm -mm. no, Paul even said it to us thousands of years ago. There's guidelines and there's rules. And when you run by those, you will receive the victor's crown. In other words, you ready? It matters how you live. It matters. It matters. You need to make choices to honor the Lord God Almighty. And you need to see that the Lord has put you in the lane he's put you in. Sometimes we get in this lane of life that we're in. And you know, this is what we do. We start comparing. Well, look over at that lane. They don't have near as many struggles. Why did God not give me this lane? I like this lane better. We do it all the time. It's not fair. Look over here. This, this is the, oh, look, this lane even feels better. You're running right now in your lane. There's something about it you don't like. And you've been struggling with it. You've been comparing it. You've, you've even thought about giving up. If I was running over there, I'd run a little longer. But nah, this, this is too hard. Is it possible that Timothy's lane that the Lord gave him to pastor the church he gave him, is it possible that was intentional to grow Timothy deeper? I think so. I've run in some lanes in the last 10 years that the Lord has showed me, I picked this for you on purpose. But, but Lord, my friend over there, he's not dealing with... Get your eyes off of that. Get your eyes on the victor's crown at the end of this run. Why you always want to look over everybody else and check where they're at? Why don't you look at the victor's crown? Why don't you focus on the end game? So human. And I want to say to you today, in a world that's pushing us to spend all of our time checking out the other lanes, I challenge you this morning to look at the end. To look at the victor's crown that the word... I'm not making it up. It says on the, on, the, on the words that the Lord gave us this morning, you're running for the victor's crown. <laughs> I went to a funeral even yesterday of, of a dear friend. And I was loving hearing those words as the son of the mother who had passed was sharing, my mom ran her race. She did it well. And I challenge you today, Young runners, medium age runners, people are barely running at all. Keep running. You're running for a victor's crown, not for anything this world has to offer. And then third, Paul talks about the hard-working farmer. I want to just pause a minute and say, 
as I looked at the three different categories he gave us, this was my favorite. This group of people in our side, even in our day, even in our day, this group of people is looked down on. I, I don't see a lot of respect for the farmer. You don't see when there's political seasons, you hardly ever say, hey, and I got an endorsement from a farmer. No, we go look for Hollywood elites or people who are on big screens. Let me tell you about people that are on big screens because I'm on one right now. They ain't all that. Don't put your hope in them. And the hardworking farmer, like when we're done here today, I'm going to go eat some food. It's not because of people on big screens. It's because somebody knew how to till the land. So for those of you who are farmers in the room today, thank you. Thank you for what you do. And you know what else is true about farmers? Head down, plow through. Growing up as a little boy, my grandfather was a farmer in South Carolina. He farmed with a mule and a till. I can remember sometimes as a little boy, I would get on the bus in the morning, and my grandpa would be literally behind the mule because he, he, he raised corn. He would literally behind the mule plowing that corn. I mean, literally I'd get on the bus 7.30, 8 o'clock, Grandpa was plowing behind that mule. I would get home at 3.30. He was still in the field. I remember my mom would say to me, son, look out there. It's one of the most hardworking men you'll ever see. Now I get it. As a 10-year-old, I'm like, well, that's crazy. <laughs> but now as an adult, Boy, Grandpa, thank you for setting that example of hard work. And I want to say to some of you in the room today, you're going through a hard season. You're toiling. I want you to look at the word. It says the hardworking farmer should be the first to receive a share of the crops. Notice the word should, should. doesn't say always will. A hardworking farmer does their job. Sometimes the crops come in poor. Sometimes they come in in abundance, they still do their job. Your job is to do the work that brings about what God wants to bring in terms of rewards. And I believe that some of us are going through battles and struggles and issues. You might not see the end result of that. You might not still be alive when that grandchild or great-grandchild comes to know the Lord as Savior. You be diligent in what you do. You keep your head down and you finish and you plow through. You say, why, why are you saying this stuff? Because that's what Paul said to Timothy. Son, Paul knew he was about to leave. Remember I told you last time I was here, according to church history, he was beheaded for his faith. He lost his life teaching this stuff, and he was saying to Timothy, Timothy, you're going to watch me die soon, son? He probably knew the handwriting was on the wall. He knew they were after him. He'd be martyred because of his faith in Christ. And he was saying to a young 30-year-old Timothy, Timothy, when I'm gone, don't forget these words because you're going to maybe want to give up. You're going to look and say, is all this labor worth it? Because look what happened to my, my mentor Paul. And I say to you in the room today, according to God's word, there is an earthly gain from the things that we do, but there is an eternal reward for what we do. And it's being faithful to God Almighty. That earthly stuff will pass, but the eternal will last. And I'm challenging you today, straight from what I heard when I first walked up, the name you can bank on is Jesus Christ. The name I want you to build your foundation on, 13-year-old, is Jesus Christ. Reflect on that. Sit later today and go, I wonder what that meant for me. The Lord will give you insight into what it means. This is one of those times where my preaching, like, is poor. But what the Lord is going to do is great. Because he's speaking into some of your hearts and souls in ways that you go, that's for me. Somebody walked in here today and you, you're toying with quitting. You're toying with giving up. You don't know if it's worth it. Get your nose to the grind. 
Be faithful in loving the Lord. Be faithful in serving Him. Be faithful in obedience. The Lord honors obedience. It's what Paul said to Timothy, and I get to say it to you this morning. What a privilege that I have His Word to preach from. Otherwise, it would be in my opinion, and that would be hogwash. The foundation for your life is Jesus Christ. If you in your life today have areas of struggle, if you in your life today are struggling with just some personal things and you can't even get a grip on them, I say to you again today, in a fresh way, hand that stuff to the Lord God Almighty. Pastor Doug is going to come up and give some very specific direction on this. You've been in a series talking about casting your anxiety and fears and cares on the Lord. And we're going to conclude this message with doing just that. And I'm so honored that I get to serve underneath Pastor Doug and his ministry here. And I'm praying right now the Lord is connecting some dots in your mind, some places in your life to what he wants to do for you. And I ask you to be open and sensitive to what the Spirit would do in your life. Pastor Doug, would you join me and give us some guidance and some direction into these areas of our lives?